Sanaha, and I welcome you all on behalf of IACD. I would request all our participants, except the panelists and the guest speaker, to kindly mute your audio and video, you know, so as to ensure a better experience throughout the session. Any query or anything that you would like to discuss during the session, you may share through the chat box that you may find. So I would request everyone again to kindly switch off their video and the audio. Yeah. Thank you everyone for joining us. And uh, as you know, we have started our series of online Vata sessions. And we had the first session with our counselor at IACD. And in the second session, we have with us Professor Bhargav Mithri. Uh, sir has a wide range of experience in both industrial and domestic products and equipment design with challenging and successful projects. And he also has an international patent. Uh, some of you might know, I think, because uh, know him already, as he was positioned as Dean IICD since 2017 until retirement in 2019. And he has also been on board of studies of product design for Rajasthan Skill University. His parallel interest lies in music and photography, playing the Saroor with several performances in India and abroad. He has created three music albums, Shivoham Shankara, Shivoham Shanti, and Road to India that share presence in the worldwide market. Welcome, Bhargav, sir. Thank you, Swati. Thank you for your really long introduction. I don't think that was essential. But all the same, for probably people who are new here. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, everybody, yeah. it's really nice to be with you all. I, I do miss those ICD days. And at least technology is allowing us to connect. Not just the city, but so many others who are probably also here. So, yes. thank you for organizing this, and uh, uh, I'm ready for whatever discussion we need to have. Sure, so, sir. So, in conversation uh, with Bhargav, sir, we have Dr. Banu Shankar Gupta, Professor ICD, who is also head of research at ICD. Uh, welcome, Varun, sir. And now hand I hand it over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Swati, for the introduction. And good evening, sir. Welcome you back to the IACD uh, stage. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, we are very lucky. Uh, actually, I am very lucky because I worked under you and got you as a mentor for uh, many uh, projects in IACD. So I have seen you from, I can say, uh, very nearly from professional aspect. Yeah. And uh, since you have, I uh, say, more than, I think, four decades of experience in uh, industrial and product design field, that's a uh, quite lot. I mean, you have seen a vast change, uh, probably a uh, change, uh, ocean change in the design field. So how do you see that? I mean, uh, what it was there 40 years ago and what is it now? Yeah, interesting question. But before that, let me say that secretly, maybe publicly, maybe uh, you're saying I was mentoring you, but secretly, maybe you were mentoring me. <laughs> <laughs> Several others. And uh, secondly, you say 40 years is a huge experience and blah, 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 and all that. I'm, I, on the other hand, will say more the experience, the more rigid you become. Okay. Yeah. The freshness in your thinking, the freshness in your ability to skip from one stage to another, to jump from one situation to another, to adapt, you slowly, you know, you start losing it. So all that you can do during such times is talk about it. Yeah. And, uh, share these experiences, but well, this is just a way of saying, putting things. Yes, it does give you a lot of uh, information, a lot of knowledge and a lot of, uh, I'd say, experiences with which you try to mold yourself into the, the uh, or whatever life brings, gives to us. 
Now coming to your question, um, how I, I would put it like this. I think Barun, what you uh, you you mean is what was designed during those times, and exactly. what is designed now according to me. So right. I'll try to uh, focus my uh, conversation on that. Okay. Yeah, uh, that would be really nice. Yeah, and in between, if you'd like to ask any any questions, let let, let it be. Uh, an interactive session because I know we have a screen in front of us and uh, I am behind your screen and you are behind my screen. Yeah. Uh, but we'll try to make it realistic, a little real. So, so let's be, uh, uh, be uh, uh, we'll try to be as uh, natural over there. Now, what I'll try to do here is share my screen. So uh, I will uh, come to this. I made some some uh, slides with which I'd like to talk about my uh, 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 to answer your question. Yeah, that would be really fantastic if you right. can share some of your slides. Hmm. Now, so. Uh, what I'll do is, uh, okay, the share here. Yeah. Okay. Are you able to see? Uh, still not. Uh, are you able to see? I'm still not. But we can see you. No, but I, I've uh, shared my screen. Can't you see it? Um, still we can see, we can see you. All right. Yeah. Okay. Let me uh, try this once again. Sure. Um, dismiss. Okay. Now I'm going to start that again. Okay. Uh, a window. Are you able to see now? Yeah, it's loading. So probably you can give us a yeah, yeah. We can see the screen now. It's showing a pro fashion. It's a very nice. Uh, yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, what the the um. Uh, question i think uh, was like uh, evolution of design and the uh, evolution of also the the passion and profession i think uh, that's what we also mentioned about so yeah. i would like to you know talk about well i've coined a new word called pro passion okay now, it's a Parallel journey between design and uh, my passion has been music, so I call it design and music. And the illustration very simply kind of tells you what it is about. Uh, I'm talking about specifically this parallel journey because they started together. Now, when I say passion, I will say passion is. Um, an unconditional and deep desire to pursue an activity. Whereas profession is an activity you pursue for a living. Now, when you combine the two, when you have pro-passion, it's a kind of a passion and profession complementing each other for a living. Now, in my case, it's been uh, the design and uh, well, I took up the music at the same time. So for me, it has been complementing each other. So if you ask me, how has it been your design? The, the, what design was then? What design is now? I would like to combine both of them together and then talk about it. So you have uh, like, say, when, uh, can you see this sketch? Yeah. 
But yeah, yeah, we can see, we can see this case, a man standing. Right, okay. Yeah. So, uh, this is an illustration which I'm trying to express that when, um, wh whatever we are today, I mean, whatever we are, who, whoever it is, when you come to, to learn in a college, or even after the learning, whatever you are, I would say that the pro, I, I call them the pro passion chakras. I mean, it's just a way to describe my personal thinking. Firstly, you come with a set of skills, which are shown over here. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm pointing to the hands and the feet. You have an inner drive. There's an inner desire to do something. Now, this inner desire could be anything. Somebody may want to be a, a kind of a, a physicist, a nuclear scientist. Somebody may want to be an airline pilot or an engineer or whatever, or a medical person. And you have an inner desire and drive to do that. The green one talks about formal training. Now, this formal training is something which is coming from outside. That means you enter an institute, a college, or a school to learn something, to guide your inner drive to something. Sometimes the inner drive and the formal training, training don't match, and neither do the skill set. So in such situations, the outcome is very different. Uh, now, I'm talking about these basic things because they apply to me and how they apply to me will be seen in the later part of the uh, uh, part of our uh, presentation. The one in the blue talks about perception and influences. Now, what do we mean by that? I, I mean that perception means what you see your external world is through your five senses. What do you perceive? Now, this could be different for different people. If I perceive something, uh, something uh, which is pleasant, it may not be so for someone else. Similarly, influences. Now, it's very, um, uh, during our course of um, uh, education and overall living, we get influenced by a lot of situations, a lot of people, a lot of acts, and lots of uh, other uh, experiences. Now, perception, influences, and formal training are the external factors. The inner factors are the inner drive and the skills. Now, all these things combined together form a certain kind of chemistry, and they make you what you are today. So this is the primary premises with which I will further dwell into this subject. Uh, does it sound Understandable, Barun, Swati, and everyone? Yes, I think yes, so. Uh, especially yes, your, sir. your sketches are so nice. I mean, it's uh, really good to see okay. uh, different color combinations. Yeah, OK. Uh, now, the next slide, therefore, talks about the profession that I've uh, undergone, I mean, I've, I've been in, and the passion. The green is the passion. The uh, the one at the top is the profession, and the timeline says 1975 until today is 2020. Now I have I have divided them in parts of NID. Now NID is my alma mater. This is where I studied. This is where I became. I, I became trained as a designer. Sir, oh, uh, I, sir, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, can you say a few words about NID? How was it uh, during those times? Yes. Now I'm going to come to that. Okay. After just in the next one or two slides, so you'll, okay. you'll you'll very soon see that. So after NID, um, my first job was at ORG Systems, which is a computer manufacturing system. In fact, NID, my graduation project was with ORG, and ultimately I took up a job with ORG, uh, which I'll talk about in the later slides. Now, this was up till 1980 to 85, then freelance designing. And then I was uh, a retainer with a company called Securometers, uh, a design consultant with them from 1996 to 2017, when I uh, joined IICD. 
and I was there for two years, I think. And uh, well, after that, the VF stands for visiting faculty. And the purple vertical line shows everything that is, uh, which is a question mark. What's going to happen now is this is a turning point in all of our lives. I mean, it includes all of us. All right. Now, the arrows which follow underneath the purple arrows, which go, say, from NID to ORG, freelance to secure, secure to IICD, and similarly in fashion, from the first step to the second and so on, it just basically means that what you are experiencing, what you are seeing, what you are feeling, uh, becomes an input to the next phase, and so on and so forth. And this way, one grows from, like, I fondly like to say, you know, uh, when you create a product, when you create a piece of music, you start from a point and you take the point onto a journey to create a form. So this is how, well, uh, I thought I'll express this. Now, Barun, I'm, I've not forgotten your question about NID early days. I'm just coming to that. Hey. This is what, the design evolution. You can see this, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, in this, this is uh, how, uh, before we talk about NID, because NID is a combination of the two uh, schools of design that you see here, uh, Bauhaus and Ulm. Have you heard of that? I'm sure you would have. I mean, and it's important, for, uh, uh, it's important for all of us to know about this. Now, Bauhaus, was a school which started in 1919 in Germany, and it, it had a short life. It lasted till 1933. And the Nazi Germany, they stopped this school of arts because they thought arts and design and all that is meaningless to them. Walter Gropius was uh, the person. And the, uh, the uh, idea in Bauhaus was integration of fine arts and crafts no, uh, 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 I mean, absence of ornamentation, uh, blending aesthetics with function, unify the principles of mass production using design, and undergo an experimental approach, meaning learning through doing, meaning hands-on experiences. Now, this was Bauhaus. After this, in 1953, that's almost 20 years later after Bauhaus was shut down, people from Bauhaus again started it after the war, the big war was over. And uh, that school, the Ulm schools, uh, uh, was from 1953 to 62. And their mandate was basically after the destruction of uh, most of uh, Germany, the fundamental thing was architectural construction, industrial products, and visual communication. So they were training people in this. Now, this is another school. But they also added, along with it, multidisciplinary designs, meaning it covers psychology, economics, politics, philosophy, sociology, photography, and systems thinking, which was the, um, the new uh, way of uh, approaching design solutions. The evolution of design method started here. So when you combine Bauhaus and Ulm, along with Ulm, Sir, please Hello. excuse me for a minute. Uh, yes. I would request all our participants to please mute their mic and switch off their videos, you know, so that we have a clear uh, session here without any interruption. I can see a few participants whose video and audio are on. So I would request them to please switch off your uh, audio and uh, your video. Okay. Any query that you may have during the session or anything that you would like to discuss, you may please share through the chat box. Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. Should I move on? Yes, sir. Please. So far, have you been able to uh, follow what I've been saying? Yeah, yes. we can uh, relate to that. Okay. 
So now I'm coming to NID. Your question: uh, How NID was? So yes. uh, what was education over there like? Uh, I'll, I'll even, uh, talk a little more uh, in that. So Bahar plus Ul plus uh, India, report, which was written by Charles and Ray Dean. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I was hearing some sound, so I just abruptly stopped. Uh, NID was um, uh, well. It's a well. It, it it started in 1961, and it's been going on since then. Its mandate was designing for diverse cultures, designing for industry, designing for people, and bridge using design between the modern and traditional ways of doing things. Right, the, the bridge the gap between the modern and traditional. And uh, follow the learning by doing. I mean, uh, you know, the project-based uh, 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 so-called uh, uh, learning pedagogy. And at that time, it was a five and a half years of education program. Today, the design program is for four years. During our times, it was for five and a half years, and it really felt long. Now, I will come to the next one. Which is uh, which will take you into a brief um, uh, so-called uh, uh, a brief uh, run through the graduation project, which I did with NID, and I did it for a company called the ORG Computer System, the o the, the ORG uh, Systems, and the project was to design their. Uh, primary computer system. Now, this was in the year 1980. Now, at that time, computers were, well, even if I say big, it, will, it, it sounds too, too small. They were really big. The design methods that we followed during those times were, were quite similar to what we are doing right now. So first, you sort of uh, do some research, you uh, ideate, you make so many different alternatives, you see what works best. You make, like, for example, this is an illustration I'd made for a, a desktop computer. And this is a model which was created out of, uh, during our times, high impact polystyrene plastic was a very good material to make models. So these are all hand fabricated. Uh, life-size models in which we also put the uh, circuitry and whatever goes inside to make it work. So you get an idea of its form and its function and its uh, overall ergonomics. So this method was still there. And finally, this is how the product looked. Now, I was able to dig out all this from my uh, uh, from uh, from my trunk, and uh, these are almost. Uh, shredded pieces of documents and I thought before they really get destroyed I must uh, photograph them and uh, at least uh, you know keep them for records so this org 20 system whose specification is at the back you can see there is a floppy drive which is equivalent to today's usb stick its storage capacity it was an amazing 1 mb of storage capacity oh. and you were so happy wow so much of information. Right, sir. Similarly, and, the size, and the size of floppy drive was probably uh, 8 inch or 11 inches? Yes, they came in two sizes. One was, I think, that uh, 10 and a half or 11 inches uh, right. big one. And the other was 5 and a quarter. There was an update to a 5 and a quarter one. Exactly. And there used to be terminologies called double-sided, double density. Means you get even more impressed. Mm -hmm. Wow, on both the sides of the uh, floppy, you can record information and okay. in full density. So after doing DS, uh, double side DS, double density DD, you get one MB of amazing storage capacity. Wow. And, and there was something called the Winchester drive. Now that is equivalent to today's, I'll say SSD. You know, SSD means uh, what? I think... Um, uh, What's SSD uh, drive? Static uh, solid uh, solid state drive. So uh, 
just be, uh, just about five six years back, you used to get uh, 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 hard disks which are part of your laptops. But now even that is gone. It's become SSDs. It's like a huge bulk of uh, 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 USB storage. And this, uh, sorry, I've uh, mistaken here by writing one MB. It had a capacity of forty MB. It says here, sorry, ten MB. 10 MB. So 1 MB became 10 MB with the Winchester. So this made a computer system, and uh, which is probably one quarter of what my uh, laptop here is today. Not even quarter. The other thing, uh, Barun and um, yes. everyone, Sir, can, is, uh, can, is, I, can I interrupt you for a moment? Yes, please. Yes, your uh, longtime friend uh, Chandra Vijay Singh sir is also online. Oh, fantastic! So, yeah. So. I see. Yes. Uh, yes. I would like to say hello and uh, welcome to CVS, sir. Yes, uh, please uh, convey my regards to him also. Yes, sir. Right. Now, here, what? Hello. Am... Hello, sir, who's that? Uh, this is Tulika. Uh, oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello ma'am. Yes. So I, I'm just interrupting because I can't see your screen at all. And I really oh, you... have been missing the screen for a long time. I wrote a message also. I uh, can't see the screen. Tulika, rejoin. I could also do that. And now it is visible. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah. yeah. I will rejoin. Rejoin. All... Yeah. OK. Thanks. Thanks. OK, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, just give me a go ahead, Barun, and I'll, I'll start yes, black sir. once again. Yes, sir. Please, uh, please continue. So we started. Uh, we in the last uh, slide we talked about SSD. Right, right. Yeah. All right. Now this picture here. Uh, again, I was really so happy to discover it, and uh, immediately I photographed this gentleman here. is called Prince Call. He was uh, working with me, and uh, he retired as an Air India something officer somewhere, and uh, in the I think computer department. Anyway, so. What's happening here is we made actual sized models because you know when you have to design and then sell the product, especially for computer system, the ergonomics was extremely extremely important because. Sir, sir can I interrupt you once again? Right. So at that time when you left NID and. Uh, you came to this ORG. So, were there any computer system available in NID, or is this no. your first time that you got exposed? No, 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 no. In fact, I was the first person ever to get this amazing project. Wow, that's yeah. like uh, putting a foot on moon, probably. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, well, well. Let's not go so far. I'd rather stay on the Earth for the time being, as long as. Uh, <laughs> It allows. Okay, sir. Yeah, please. <laughs> but Barun, um, yes, see, computers. You know what? This uh, one MB or or ten MB sized computer, which was as big as your dining table, used to cost a lakh of rupees. Okay, okay at that time. Yes, even at that time. So what I'm working here on. My graduation project was something worth even probably more than that because this is a much bigger system out here. Now, okay. so uh, there were four or five basic computer manufacturing organizations at that time. I'm talking about the year 1980 81, and that is DCM data products, uh, uh, HCL computers, IBM mainframe, uh, ORG systems. And uh, I think there was one more. I think Wipro, or uh, I don't know whether I mentioned that, but there, there was one or two more. But they right. came Wip in slowly. Wipro slowly. probably came later. I think it came later, but there was right. one more. Uh, but there was a stiff competition between them. Now, okay. all the machinery that goes inside the computer used to come from abroad. Yeah. So the only unique selling point was how ergonomically and aesthetically your product is uh, in terms of its um, uh, you know it's uh, the, the unique selling uh, factor right so worked a lot in these areas so uh, we we 
took a lot of efforts making good models and uh, making sure that everything happens, uh, you know. So the two on the um, left here, these two black things, they yeah. are your so-called USB sticks of one MB. Okay, right? sure. those are those looks like at least uh, a feet long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And when you start this machine, by the way, when you switch it on, it will take about two minutes to to you know warm up and start. And then your CRT, that's a visual display unit, will start blinking. Right. And then, uh, and then the the sound of the fans and the sound of some machinery inside starts. You know, the the the, the uh, rev revving sounds start coming in. And like a Boeing Boeing yeah. aircraft. Yes. And then you feel that wow, my machine is really working, and you feel proud, right? So yeah. these are our kind of. Uh, um, computers i mean at least when i and i i, I really consider these to be my uh, so called uh, the, the the lords because this gave me graduation wow and finally this is the product which was marketed it's called the final org 330 the final professional marketable product the gateway to graduation now the mm -hmm. crt now listen i'd like to confess a few things if any ORG people are alive today, I mean, are not alive, but they are here. I think they'll kill me if I say that. The CRT that you see on the top here, no? Yeah. CRT means the cathode ray tube, or let's say the, okay. the screen. Yeah. Now, in our so-called aesthetical style, I designed it in such a way that I sold that the aesthetical form to my uh, uh, to the ORG fellows and they happily agreed. And now, if you see, it's 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 kind of shaped in such a way that it's so difficult to mold this. You cannot mold it easily. You exactly. have to make split molds in order to right. get this. And then when exactly. you get all these kind of curvatures, what happens is when the tube touches the frame, the bezel, there are gaps over there wherever it curves. And so okay. you may find cockroaches creeping in there or, you know, things like that. Okay. So a basic fundamental design flaw. And yet okay. we made it. So if you see, uh, we corrected it later. If you see the, um, the other, uh, okay, so this is the final uh, machine, what it looked like. And by the way, on the left is a line printer. Now, the challenge in this line printer was to give it a good look and to make it silent, I mean, not silent, but less noisy. So the limit was uh, 60 decibels. So we had to work around, you know, um, factors which will make. Now, of course, all this, uh, since I'm talking to a lot of designers here, I'll talk about one more aspect, the materials. The materials are extremely important and the processes which uh, mold these materials into the shape you want. Now, the materials here have been one fiberglass for the VDU, the, that's a CRT, sheet metal, about gauge 22 or uh, between 16 to 22 gauge sheet metal, wood, mainly these, and probably aluminum, and very little of plastics. Now, if you see the keyboard, mm -hmm. if you can see that slant on the keyboard, uh, there are right. some top switches. So these function switches and all that. Now this was absolutely my design, and it really it, it did very well. So the function that you find on your key, uh, laptop uh, are uh, integrated in the keyboard. But here I thought, you know, I've come from a design school. I must do something different, and we did this. And believe me, even molding this was quite a pain. So I'll see those uh, designs now. Now look at this. ORG 60. Do you see the difference in the video, the CRT? Yes, we can see. It's uh, much more slanted. It has straightened up. Do you see the keyboard? That slant has gone. Right. So, in fact, it was a learning for all of us. And we were really excited. And I was really lucky to be working with people like Gautam Sarabhai and, and uh, Gira Ben Sarabhai and Shama Ben Sarabhai. They were the design pioneers. In fact, they uh, they were also 
part of the uh, beginning of an id and uh, that's another long story so we'll talk about it later but now also if you notice because these so called clients were design specific you will find even the color scheme has changed so now you see that it's gone from uh, from uh, dark gray light gray yeah. to to beige and dark brown right. uh, i used to call it peach and burgundy mm -hmm. and then there's some graphic style also here org 60 as you see here we write it in right. such a way so when you put this machine in 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 the computer society of india exhibition which happens every year and you are mm -hmm. along with competitors your machine really stands out mm -hmm. and then after that it's all up to the marketing guys how well they convince the clients and uh, and we were in good business so it was a very interesting game now this is the environment in which it used to be this is that older uh, slightly older one mm -hmm. and uh, this is the environment in which the computer systems now combined all these things combined together if you add all these 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 machines right okay. other than the printers i'd say all these things today are in your telephone yes Or sir that's that's amazing phone. yeah even even we have a gyroscope in our telephone so that it can rotate and balance yeah it. yeah so so this is uh, uh, but whatever it is i should uh, say at this point is that the design method remained the same mm -hmm. but the materials changed the processes changed the technological aspects changed the insides changed so you shifted from this phase to smaller and smaller and smaller so as we went further ahead things became the, the change was really fast but the methodology has remained the same again i mean i uh, i have just recorded as many photographs uh, that i found in my trunk mm -hmm. uh, i should like to point out one product out here on the left extreme left this is called a mag tape a magnetic tape this was also like a storage thing it was like okay. a hard disk but okay. i have specifically angled it in such a way using i mean uh, laws of ergonomics that it is easy to operate like you know yes. otherwise they came in vertical uh, cupboard types and it looked really dull but then here you know it felt so these it's, were the kind of thoughts we had yeah it looks very nice i think it's probably waist height and a slanting height yeah right so right that, that makes it easy to operate and one thing i really learned during those days and i think everybody uh, even today uh, people learn like this only by doing like the the famous bauhaus learning through doing now what we learned through this was if you want to give a good form interesting form the process required for it becomes extremely uh, uh, complicated so so we used to have a kind of a, we used to you know what sort of check is that called uh, you know we out balances i mean what will be the uh, advantage if you get into a form like this but yes. if you look at it from users point of view so see at that time also empathy was a word which we never used but empathy was within us already we had to look at it from users point of view without using the because it was not known to us at that time but today it's become such a big thing you know let's go empathy you see um so i'd say uh the methods remain the same all right this is one of my boss and maybe this is the last picture oh wait a minute where did this come from uh this was an uh, what you see on the table was an experimental piece where it was it's put up in an exhibition and uh i said it was a failure i i i didn't like the product it looked terrible but 
the engineers loved it the engineers loved it because it served all their functions but the, for the user it was a bit uh, not so aesthetic but i preserved it here just to show that that well here is one product that's not so neat and good in looks at least according to me yeah it looks like something like the bill printing machine that we get in the uh, shopping uh -huh. mall at the cashiers counter right. so you know it's uh, it's like it's got a metal frame and then in the center there's a gap and the the, the visual display unit is put over there so it's okay. very convenient for an engineer oh i don't have to this is called saving table space you know the footprint now i remember yeah yeah we were working on the footprint and also showing on how uh, on a small table that you can do this uh, you can put it uh, so it this the it, it's uh, video doesn't have to spread out onto another footprint so this was the main reason for that plus even the cooling was common between the, the frame and the video so there were a lot of engineering advantages yes. but but well after all user is the king so i think users didn't like it so we never manufactured this we just made about i think 5 7 and uh, the engineers tested them all right now varun is yes, sir what was your um, uh, other question am i losing yeah, link so, right right so uh, basically our question uh, right now got a little transformed because yes. you you started talking about the genre of 8086 processor of 1970s yes right yeah. right and uh, so uh, uh, it is uh, something like what we see in black and white movies so right. <laughs> so how the transition how did you ex uh, how did the design uh, we can say the expectations changed from that era to uh, present era yeah now you see generally it's always evolving varun see yes. there is no fixed thing that okay now my design is going to look like that i'll do this and that. no 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 it's a long evolutionary process and what is responsible to bring in this revolution i mean sorry evolution is mainly technology and materials and uh, i'll say the more artistic probably you are in, in in your design the newer technologies are probably able to adapt uh, if not technologies but i'd say processes are able to adapt to your uh, so called uh, those requirements uh, but what happens many times is people see now let's take the example of the apple designs what is their fundamental premises on which they work simplicity isn't it yes simplicity right for whom simplicity for the user so for the user if you see their their laptop it looks so simple neat without any sort of frills and yet to make that the process if you see it's a fairly long and extensive process and that's one of the reason one of the uh, cost adding factors to those machines of course they are reliable but then in all their uh, even those uh, the components in product they 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 are so radically they'll uh, you know uh, they'll achieve standards which no other can uh, do but that's their philosophy whereas right. on the other hand i mean you know uh so now if wait a minute so, let me go sir i would like to interrupt again because yes. in in the first slide uh, uh, we remember that you had shown a nice sketching of a sarod and uh, some uh, uh, architecture of home so you have uh, uh, you are carrying out two passions side by side one is design for product or industrial oh. design and the other I... one music right so how do uh, i mean how do how can you practice these two extraordinary thing in such a high level oh, can you see my screen still yes sir of course we can see 
yeah okay so like here you can see uh, uh, i i don't know like I, i put up some kind of a thing where yeah. okay now let's uh, be a little more specific to your to answering your question all right i'll come to this, this slide a slide show from current slide okay all right are you with me yes we can say that so barun uh on the left i've written a few points it starts from uh, a point to a line to a shape to forms objects and systems you get that yeah and on the right in purple i've written note tone tune melody song and symphony part of music yeah now in the green at the top i've written similar intellectual skills but different physical skills which is written at the bottom now this is for design and music now when i told you that very first diagram in which there was a character with those pro passion chakras did you see that pro passion yes. chakra in which we said skills right the desire the uh, training i mean the what do you call uh, the, uh, the the formal training that you get and your perception so in my case i had the basic inner desire and the skills for both this design and music and fortunately it so happened that when i started uh, my my learning um, uh, formal learning training at nid it was the same time that i started the music uh, training also but they both took different speeds of uh, so called uh, because one was the profession was a little more um, uh, of uh, uh, so called uh, focused and precise whereas the music was just flowing by its own but both added to each other now but it uh, when when you uh, at least i used to look at both these um, different activities with a kind of a parallel that what a point is in design okay i must play something for you <laughs> that would be wonderful uh, let me see if i can connect i wish ah there okay i think now i have opened my google drive thanks to technology i say we can do this let's hope it works now when you talk in design what a point everybody know what a point is it's just something without a dimension but it's just a thing on the coordinate x y and z axis pe ek point hai right yes similarly in music i'll say i'll call it a note a point so a point in music becomes a note which may sound like let's see Did you hear something? Yes, of course. All right. Now, come one line up. It's it's a line. These are right. the elements of design. I'll say just call them elements of design, just for the sake of. Uh... Okay. Now, if I want to express a line in music, it could, to me, it meant this. it will come so it is a note in time okay you, you are you kind of yeah, getting it yeah, we can relate it it's like a movement of a point or a movement of a note that gives a tone so i'll call that a tone and then you give a shape to it so like you give it a form tune. to it yeah or like Everybody. let's jump to say a melody or or a song yeah or just a melody then you know uh, you can play something like uh, it's buffering and it will come there i think there is a network issue Welcome, sir. Can you hear us? Yes, 
yes sir i think there's some network issue so he'll be able to join us soon yeah yeah but anyway it was an uh, i think it is a very good uh, a nice comparison how a point can go to make a system and uh, in a music a note can become a symphony so we can wait for a few seconds for her god sir sure form you, uh, you you were able to hear that right yes yes in uh, in the beginning there was Hello. a problem am i lost uh Sir, can Hello. you hear us? Uh, I think uh, he's having some network issues. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah, Hello. we'll wait for a couple of seconds so that he can yeah, okay. uh, reset it up. Uh, otherwise, it was uh, really good. I mean, uh, the uh, way yeah. he explained this. So, uh, and we are looking uh, forward to a few more things uh, from sir, his expression in music and, you know. Right, right. So, So, so maybe I should. Uh, hello. Hello. I'm connecting. Yes, yes, sir, right. we can I hear. I'm connecting. Now, can you see me? Yes, yes, we can see you and hear you. Uh, were you able to hear me earlier? I mean, when I was sharing certain things. Yes, uh, we could hear the music. Okay. Yes. Uh, did you hear the last one? Yeah, we could hear the last one, the long one. So we couldn't right. hear it completely, though. We heard the last part of it, I think. Yeah. It's okay. But you get an idea, right? Right. OK, now I'll go again back to the sharing that screen. So Barun, coming back to your question. Um, so I started looking at it in this particular way. The design and uh, let's say the music what? yeah wait a minute uh, light show light show light show the light show is not happening oh let's give it some time mm -hmm. probably there, there is some uh, kind but of I Oh, see the screen? Yeah, we can see the screen. Okay. So if you scroll down, we can see. Yeah, okay. I'll scroll down now. So, uh, okay, even this next one is not coming. I think I'll reopen this page. Okay. This, uh, this thing has, uh, has gone frozen. Like, I think it's, it's hung. Okay. Now, I'll again go back window. Uh, I see the work uh, and then uh, profession. Yeah, the screen is getting I coming loading. Yes, we can see the folder list. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 all right, so there we are. I'll try to jump to that particular slide here. Like show from the current slide. So we are yeah, not able to see the presentation. We can just see the folder that's on your screen. Oh, so, uh, you're not seeing the presentation? No, no. sir. I? Really? Yeah. So uh, anyway, sir, uh, uh, let the computer load the presentation. And it we can. Open. I, I, it's there on my screen. OK, sir. Let, so, let me, right, let me yeah. do it. 
Okay. Let me get into it. Just hold on. I'll stop sharing the screen. I'll go here. I'll present now. Choose a window and uh, this one and share. Tell me, is it visible? Uh, it's loading. Yeah, we can see the screen now. Good. All right. Now you can see the screen, the same screen we were on. Right, right. All right. So what happened? Well, uh, let me know when we are running out of time. OK, so I can always stop uh, at any point. Uh, uh, what was happening was um, uh, like, uh, you know, you started seeing things in a, in a similar way. There were many projects which were more and more complex projects, uh, which were kind of in, uh, indirectly relating to uh, um, more and more uh, advanced forms of music, which uh, I started, you know, and both of them were in some way or the other complementing each other. Now, if I show you in my, can you see the slide? Yeah, we can see systems and symphony. Systems and symphony. Now, on the right, I am showing you three of my, say, so called, I'm in a rough way using the word symphony, but these are the three albums. These are the so called, the, um, the um, I would say, systems which sound, uh, sound uh, so called creations of, uh, say, three different music albums which I have made. And during while these were being made, parallelly these projects were going on. Can you see the other photographs? There's a truck here on the left. Now this is a mobile testing laboratory. It's extremely um, uh, complicated from inside. It's used for electrical uh, substation sites for maintenance and on. And there are many uh, heavy and fragile equipments in there. And then there is this um, on the on the right. You can see it's secure written. Yes, it's a thermostat, which okay. I had designed. This is the first time. Okay, now here I'd like to bring uh, one point. Can you see that little orangish dot here? I we can see that. That's the, probably the LED glowing. Yeah, yeah. That's it. now. This is the first time that we we um, uh, in in fact talking about materials, that how end processes, how we can deal with material and process in such a way that that thing of simplicity, without making a hole, you can still see the glow of the light. So which, uh, well, this, uh, this is how aesthetics has been changing over time. Similarly, if you see the product right at the bottom here, right, so this is a kind of a router and um, it, you push it into the plug and then the plug which is occupied you give it back onto the product so you can you can again use that uh, socket uh, so okay. this was another interesting design and then this was the on the left is the uh, solar concentrator that was another very interesting project and then in the middle, there is, uh, well, this was a fun project where we done shelters in a bio park in Udaipur. So there were so many different animals and birds, the forms which uh, we designed and, um, uh, you know, put them in different parts of the bio park where people come, rest, do some picnic and, and the kind of uh, totally a different thing. So similarly, when you look at it on the musical front, the uh, album called Road to India is more like a fun product. When I, the, the music over there is fun. Whereas if you take Shivoham Shankara, it's a hardcore system design like a truck over here. If you listen to it, at least I can associate it like that. And then um, similarly, you know, so at least my perception has been like that. And uh, you might, you might uh, laugh at it, but uh, well, that's the way it is with me. And uh, that's the way I see things. So that was that. Now tell me, Barun, what else were we talking about? Yes. Uh, so it was a very nice and charming journey uh, from 70s to uh, 2020. So uh, I have one small request. If you can play a tune in your sarod, so that's the last uh, okay. request I can say. 
Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know uh, what was coming. Yeah, so you want me to play some Sarod? Yes, yeah. uh, too, too. Demonstration of, of uh, just give me uh, half a minute. Okay, okay. sir. Ten, ten yeah. seconds. Sure. Ten seconds. I'm here only. So Swati, I think that was, uh, 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 I think, a uh, very uh, encouraging presentation from Bhargav, sir. Are you able to yes, sir. It? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. We can. So this, this is my uh, so-called, uh, call it the pen. Yes. Okay. The mighty pen. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, I'll play some very short uh, piece of uh, composition. Sure, sir. It was a uh, breathtaking, marvelous, and I do not know how uh, else I can appreciate that. Uh, I mean, I wish. Uh, Guru, this, uh, if you are following some of our uh, Facebook updates, this is the next composition which I am going to uh, present in in our weekly episodes. Okay, so I just prepared it, and uh, it's it's for you all. Uh, for, sure. For I, I see uh, That would be really nice. And many, many, many thanks from our side. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. And sure. especially for the music piece. Although we keep listening to your compositions on Facebook, but it was another pleasure to listen to it live. And yeah. the journey and evolution of design methodology that you shared over the years. Mm -hmm. you know, and the way you combine profession and passion as you know, pro passion, really inspiring. Uh, and sir, we have uh, some discussion in the chat box that we could see. Yeah. So if you could, uh, what would yeah. be your advice to students as to how they can use their non-design passions to strengthen their design cap capabilities? Uh, uh, so some Anu ma'am has requested. No, no. Okay, sir. What would be your advice to students as to how they can use their non-design passions to strengthen their design capabilities? I guess, I guess, do it, uh, do it unconsciously. The moment you start doing things consciously, you know, things uh, things don't work. Like if you try to tell that, you know, there's that famous um, uh, uh, analogy. Suddenly you ask that centipede, oh my god, you got thousand legs, how do you manage to, uh, to, to keep them all in such a way that you can walk? Then suddenly it forgets how to do that. It becomes conscious. Mm -hmm. I'd say if you have a passion, then I'll 
the definition of passion is an inner burning desire to do an activity no matter whether you get any benefits out of it or not it's for yourself uh, the entertainment aspect the benefits aspect is secondary but it's for your own self now if you want to do something for your own self if you love to cook go ahead cook and try to make it interesting if you are a designer and if you are cooking look at cooking from a design aspect create do something crazy by the way that's why my wife doesn't allow me in the kitchen <laughs> probably said you put a lot of chili powder yeah i hope she's not listening i'm sure she's not okay <laughs> but it's a serious advice okay do it uh likewise if you if you if you're fond of writing nothing like it anything i guess um, if you try to say no i want to do design as well as i want to do something then i think forget it focus only on one thing but if you have a passion a true passion only then it will work so so that uh very rightly put sir and you know once again from on behalf of the entire icd we would like to thank you and uh, it was a wonderful session we have received very good uh, comments from all our participants you know yeah. and they all enjoyed your uh, the experience that you shared with us and uh, you know how the journey has been and how it's going to be different now but uh, just on this parting note i'd like to say one thing that change has come yes the way we will adapt to it we are slowly already doing that but for the designers and for almost all the professions there is a vast field open now and especially if you talk about design a new thing which uh, one sees really evolving is something called speculative design speculative design means it's like designing for uncertainty now here is a situation right in front of all of us so and in this the other lesson that we have really learned which we have been ignoring most of the time is in the so called empathy part the you know if we, if we keep talking about empathy look at look at it from the other person shoes i would rather say look at it from the wings from the eyes of a bird look at it from from the roots of a tree or from the leaves of a tree what i'm trying to say is empathy has to include nature exactly sir i think i should uh, try to correlate it with a perspective of a musician so a musician will always preserve his or her instrument uh, in the finest way he can like keeping a jewelry item yes. so uh, that kind of empathy should uh, be preserved by a designer with his or her own creations or passions i think i am right sir yes absolutely so uh, with this uh, from icd we would like to uh, really appreciate you for the time that you have given to us it's almost one hour that you could give for us and for the budding designers yes, and hopefully you, we, can, uh, we can conduct this type of interactions quite often yeah sure and i really wish uh, best to all and uh, just manage yourselves to to stay alive and kicking i yes. i know sir we want you on the stage <laughs> right. i would also like to you know thank all our participants uh, who attended today's session and uh, i hope everybody found it very interesting and uh, you know so our uh, thank you so much sir and uh, in the 
series of online vata sessions our next session will be with dr madhu choudhary who is on campus doctor at iicd so rest of the information will be circulated soon so uh, thanks a lot sir and uh, okay we also extend our prayers to all the families who have been affected by the cyclone yes you know so yeah all right thank you everyone thanks so thank you thank you swati thank you sir okay thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Stay, stay happy and stay safe. Yeah. Bye. Show me. I mean, let me know about.